evening. This is Scotty Reed with Black Talk Radio News. It's pretty late where I am. I uh, just wrapped up a program about maybe two hours ago, maybe three hours ago. Uh, it ended at 10 o'clock. Every Wednesday night we do a program we title Ending the Drug War, where we interview a former cop, judge, prosecutor, uh, DEA agent, you name it. Uh, if they worked in law enforcement, and have experience with the drug war, then we interview them. And they come to us by way of Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. I definitely recommend that website, uh, leap.cc. Now, last night, I talked about the Stop and Frisk program that the New York City Police Department has been running. And it is reported that they detained a record number of people last year. And I asked the question, is Michael Bloomberg, who is the mayor of New York, ignoring a crisis that's going on with the New York City Police Department, which has been in crisis mode, in my opinion, for quite some time. Uh, Ramarley Graham is a 20-year-old black man who just lost his life just last week, okay, being chased by some cops for some marijuana, went into his house, Seemed to be walking all calm, pulled out his keys, unlocked the door, went into his home, locked the door behind him. Then you see these two cops coming uh, down the street, trying to kick down his door to get into the building where he lived. And they eventually did uh, break into the building and ended up killing Ramarley Graham, 20 years old, who was found to be unarmed. This is part of the drug war. Now, in this stop and frisk program, I'm trying to remember from memory, but if my memory serves me correctly, the New York City Police Department in 2002 stopped 684,000 people. Okay, I think the exact figure was 684,330 people. This was in 2002, Michael Bloomberg's first year in office. Now, I asked a question last night if Michael Bloomberg is ignoring a crisis at the New York City Police Department. Tonight I'm asking a different question. I'm asking, is Michael Bloomberg, mayor of New York City, a racist? Now, I know there's some people out there, probably white and black, probably saying, no, he didn't. No, he didn't play the race card. You know, black people always calling other people racist. Well, I'm going to qualify with I, the question that I'm asking. Of all of these people that were stopped and frisked, and I'll get to some more numbers later, the vast majority of them were black. Then after black people, it was Latino people that were stopped the most. Now, in the 10 years since Michael Bloomberg has been mayor of New York, the New York Police Department has stopped 4.8 million people. I, I could be off by uh, a couple of decimals. It could be 4.3, 4.5, or 4.8. But it was over 4 million people stopped and detained by the New York City Police Department over a 10-year period. All the while, Michael Bloomberg was mayor, and he still is mayor. Now, Get this, out of the 4.8 million or so people who were stopped and detained and searched by the New York City Police, 87% of those people, which breaks down, I think, to about 3.2 million people, were not arrested and not so much as even given a citation for jaywalking. That's pretty huge. That is pretty huge. So that means that your policy of stopping and frisking black people, hoping to find weapons on them or illegal narcotics or any other, other kind of drugs that our government has, has said we are prohibited from having, only less than, uh, what would we say, 13% were found to have such items on them. But the vast majority, 87%, or 3.2 million people, were innocent people that the New York City Police Department harassed 
and violated their Fourth Amendment rights. See, a lot of people don't understand their rights. You have a right not to be searched or subjected to unreasonable searches. I mean, it's like we're living in Nazi Germany when we watch, you know, World War II movies or we read in the history books about the terrible reign of the Nazis. It's pretty ironic that you have a Jewish man, Michael Bloomberg, who is overseeing or, or is responsible for the Gestapo-like tactics of the New York Police Department, violating people's freedoms and liberties. And I want to point out, I want to make a point that he's a Democrat. Because you got some people who think that the answer to all of black people's problems is to vote straight party ticket Democrats. When while you have a number of racist people in the Republican Party and the GOP has been behind much of these voter ID laws which are racist in nature and meant to disenfranchise uh, black people. You will have Republicans say stuff that's offensive and, and purposely so because that seems to energize their base of racists. But you have Democrats who are just as racist. And while they may not uh, be stupid enough or callous enough to make publicly racial, uh, racial insensitive comments, the proof is in the policies that they enact, that they enforce. You heard the old uh, phrase, proof is in the pudding. Well, the proof that Michael Bloomberg is a racist is in the New York Police Department's policy of stopping and frisking and primarily targeting black people. It's that black and white for me. Michael Bloomberg is a racist. He needs to answer to the people of New York. And then this is, this is what get me. You'll have a lot of people that might watch this video or who have read that story that are white people and they won't care. They don't care because it's not happening to them. The police are not occupying their communities. But like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Now I'm reading news articles that they estimate in 10 years that there will be uh, 30,000 plus of these unmanned aircraft, also known as drones, operating in the United States. What communities do you think they are going to target? It is time for black people to wake up. I was watching uh, this documentary uh, shortly before I decided to make this video about uh, the civil rights struggle. And this particular story that I was watching occurred in Mississippi. And you know, we heard the old tale about how, you know, the Democrats were the racist party, and they were. Well, actually, you got racist in all parties. But that the Democrats was the most racist of the two, but then they started leaving the Democratic Party and joining the Republican Party because the Democrats uh, passed civil rights but it's not that simple. What I learned from what I saw tonight was that black people in Mississippi started organizing against the Democratic Party. They registered as Democrats and then they worked to uh, elect delegates to remove the racist elements of their party. So it's, it's not like we've been told like they just uh, decided to up and leave. No, they were forced out. And I've talked about this on some of my past shows about we need to take the same tactic and apply it to the Republican Party. Right now, every black person in America that's eligible to vote, that's registered to vote, or can register to vote, needs to be participating in choosing who the Republican nominee would be. Who will face President Obama in November? 2012.
I would like it to be the least racist Republican in the field. I wish it to be a Republican who at least is going to talk about the drug war, at least who's going to talk about racism in the justice system, who's going to talk about the racist way that the death penalty is applied in this country, and that's Ron Paul. And he talked about that during the ABC debates when they tried to bring up those newsletters from 20 years ago, which he denied writing, took responsibility for, however, since he was the publisher, and apologized for. But some black people were still stuck on that. And they're not paying attention to the message. They're not paying attention to the continuation of the drug war and the racism in the criminal justice system that is not being addressed by our black president. Yes, he's done a little. And yes, you've had a lot of Republicans obstructing him. But I haven't heard him talk about anything that's going to address the issues that most impact black people. And it's not jobs. Jobs is high on the list. But higher on that list is the drug war that's being used to re-enslave our people on their new prison plantations. That is being used to stick people with felonies, which then make them second-class citizens and relegated to a state of Jim Crow. So we need to get off of this. It's only the Republicans that's our enemies. We need to get off of this. The Democrat is the friend of the black man and woman because, he, because they're not. And as I stated, the proof is in the policy. Here you have Michael Bloomberg, mayor of what has been described the most liberal city in the United States. You have this man, a Democrat, Michael Bloomberg, who in 10 years on his watch, the New York Police Department has stopped and frisked, violating the Fourth Amendment rights of black people the vast majority being black people, but 4.8 million people detained for no reason whatsoever, except for a fishing expedition, hoping that they caught somebody with something. Michael Bloomberg had enough data to know that this policy was not working that it was not stopping any crime. And that the vast majority of the communities that the New York Police Department was targeting were not full of criminals. It is racial profiling, plain and simple, in black and white. If you were stopped and detained by the New York Police Department in the past 10 years, if I was you, I'd be trying to find other victims of this white supremacy racist policy and putting together a class action lawsuit because that seems to be the only thing that hurts racism. These racist people is when you start getting at their money. That's all they seem to care about. Okay? And so that's where you need to hit New York City. It's in the wallet. Now, unfortunately, you know, for the taxpayers, they had nothing to do with this policy. They didn't know that it was going on. I, I don't know what to tell you. But these are public officials that work for you. So therefore, you're responsible for them. So either you can elect public officials that believe in true freedom and justice, elect politicians who are not racist and targeting the black community, or you can face the consequences of your dereliction of duty. That's all I have to say on the matter. This is Scotty Reed, Black Talk Radio News. Visit us online at blacktalkradionetwork.com.